I call this hearing to order. Earlier this year, Republicans and Democrats on this committee joined together to enact a bill called the WILD Act. It is the Wildlife Longevity and Innovation Driver Act. These really smart people behind us come up with these acronyms, and it usually works, so the WILD Act. Uh, the law supports innovative efforts to conserve wildlife, to manage invasive species, and to protect some of the world's rarest and most beloved animals. The WILD Act established the Theodore Roosevelt Genius Prize to encourage technological innovation. These prizes annually award $100,000 to innovators who help solve our nation's most difficult wildlife and invasive species challenges. The prizes were inspired by cutting edge conservation innovations that are already in use, you know, such as the DNA analysis to identify the origin of illicit ivory supplies, uh, thermal imaging to notify authorities of poachers, uh, and a fish passage that automatically extracts invasive fish from systems. So today, we will consider S-2194, the promoting resourceful and effective deterrence against threats or risks involving species. And you say, how do you come up with a name like that? Well, it's also called the Predators Act. You take the first letter of each of those words. The Predators Act is a bill to establish a sixth Theodore Roosevelt Genius Prize, which I've introduced along with Senators Carper and Kramer and Booker, and the bill would incentivize the development of non-lethal, innovative technologies that reduce conflict between human and wildlife predators. Uh, although rare, human encounters with predators can lead to injury, and as we know, even death. In Wyoming, the species most closely associated with this problem is the grizzly bear. Uh, just last year, a hunting guide from Jackson Hole was tragically killed by grizzlies. The two grizzlies responsible for the attack were euthanized. And it's not just hunters that are at risk. In northwest Wyoming, Wapiti, Wyoming, the elementary school near Cody had to build an eight-foot-high, heavy-gauge metal fence around its schoolyard to protect its students. You can see the image here. Please close the gate for the safety of the people and animals at Wapiti School. Wyoming isn't alone. It's not alone when it comes to grappling with human-predator conflicts. Fatalities occur each year from sharks. In 2018, there were 66 shark attacks, including 32 in the United States. And a little over a week ago, a young girl uh, boogie boarding in Florida suffered shark bites to her foot and ankle. Comparatively, she was lucky. In North Carolina, a girl lost a leg and two fingers while swimming this summer. An American woman was killed by a shark in the Bahamas around the same time. Bears and sharks are not the only predator species of concern. You know, in Colorado, a runner's encounter with a mountain lion on a trail left him injured and the animal dead. And tragically, in Florida, a young child was killed at Disney World by an alligator. Our distinguished panel is going to help us to examine how the establishment of a new Theodore Roosevelt Genius Prize can incentivize technological innovation to reduce future human-predator contact. Now, our witnesses include Brad Hovengay, who is the Jackson Hole Regional Wildlife Supervisor at the Wyoming Game and Fish Department, and I'm going to formally introduce him shortly. Forrest Galante, a biologist, wildlife tracker, and host on Animal Planet of Extinct or Alive, and we're thrilled to have you here today joining us. And Dr. Nick Whitney, who is a senior scientist for the Anderson Cabot Center for Ocean Life at the New England Aquarium, and is in Boston. So I look forward to hearing from our witnesses about their experiences with human-predator conflicts and how innovative technologies can help reduce them. 